Hey guys, welcome to module six. We're now turning our attention to the wider natural environment. I'm sure that when you first think about this topic, you're going to be thinking about uh, unspoiled wildernesses, places that have seen very little human influence, if at all. However, in reality, most of our experiences with the natural environment occur in places that have uh, at least some extent of human influence, sometimes even radical human influence. So for example, uh, conservation areas and national parks uh, very often have walking trails or, or lookouts to allow us to better experience and enjoy the natural environment. Uh, there can even be places that were originally um, tangled bushland that get cut back to uh, allow the creation of a picnic area. And within these areas, we can even build amenities that again provide us with a more enjoyable experience of the natural world. In the opposite direction, we can have uh, land that was originally cleared for crops or cattle grazing. We can transform that land radically back into a native state through bush regeneration. And all the way on the other uh, side of the spectrum, we can have experiences of the natural environment within settings that are completely artificial. For example, the Royal Botanic Gardens in Sydney uh, provides access to a natural environment experience that would never actually occur in nature. And in fact, just behind me, you can see a, a built uh, setting that includes natural elements that allow us to have experiences of nature within the urban environment. So what this all means is that studying the natural environment involves understanding the ways in which humans modify the environment. In a moment you'll see a short video describing a couple of ways in which humans have modified the natural environment within the Royal National Park just south of Sydney. So, have a look. So we have here a gentle stream that makes its way from deep within the National Park, travelling downhill, forming still pools as it makes its way towards the sea. Okay, so we can hear in the distance, perhaps, a small waterfall, and we can see the, the landscape stretching on into the horizon. Okay, so this is pretty much a quintessential natural environment experience. However, if we move on just a little bit, we can see that this pool would not exist without human intervention. And so an element of this environment that makes it so appealing adds an affordance of a little swimming hole, yet is pretty much artificial. You can see in the distance a retaining wall that's been built so that this water can collect as a still pool. From this vantage point, it's much easier to see the built quality of this feature of the environment. Yeah, so quite a simple architectural element. And it does blend in fairly well with the natural surrounds. However, it's undeniably there because a human has put it there. That is, we have modified this environment so that it better suits, it provides a better fit for what we want to get out of the environment. Okay, so we value enjoying the environment. We value social experiences within the environment. And so we manipulate that environment, we modify it to better suit those needs. And so without this wall, it would simply be uh, a continual stream that flows downhill, creating small pools, but nothing as remarkable as this. Now, of course, this does not invalidate this setting as a natural environment, uh, but it does illustrate the fact that our relationship with the environment is one uh, in which we modify and change the environment. 
And now, back on the path, we can see clearly once again a way in which we modify the environment to better suit our needs. Without a path here, which stretches actually approximately 26 kilometres from Bundina in the north to Otford in the south, without a path like this, we would have much more difficult, perhaps even dangerous access to beautiful natural environment places like that we've just seen. So from what we've seen and heard so far, we can quite clearly see that humans modify the environment to better suit their needs. But part of that modification means that we have an impact on the environment. And that impact can be in terms of intended as well as unintended consequences. The main topic in this module is looking at how our values and beliefs provide a framework for our behaviours. And of course, we're mostly interested in how this supports environmentally responsible behaviours. Of course, we all know that there's a gap between the way we intend to behave and the way we actually conduct ourselves. So, one of the other main topics is understanding what might cause such a gap. In summary, the three key questions that we're going to explore throughout this module are firstly, what is the natural environment and why is it important? Secondly, how can we understand the relationship between humans and the natural environment? And finally, why is there a gap between our intentions and our behaviours? And what factors might support environmentally responsible behaviour? So, as you go through this module, I encourage you to think about how you see the environment. What is your relationship with the natural world? What are your own values and beliefs? And how do they relate to your behaviour? Do you, for instance, perceive some sort of gap between how you think you should behave and how you actually behave? And of course, why do you think that might be?